My name is Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and in this video I'm looking at some aspects of printer paper and ICC profiles. In particular, this is the kit I use for making profiles. I've been making profiles for this, the Canon Pro 310. Now there's a 300 underneath it. Now I've done quite a lot of testing with it already and I'll be doing a more detailed review in due course. But I made lots of profiles as part of my testing to see the differences between the 310 and the 300 using Canon papers. Now that's fair enough, you'd expect Canon papers to work very well. But a question I'm often asked is, can I use Epson papers on a Canon printer? Can I use Canon papers on an Epson printer? Now I've made loads of Canon profiles or, you know, for the Epson ET8550 and you know, they work very well. In this style, I've made a whole load of profiles for a range of Epson papers on this, the Pro 310. You might think, well, are there any differences between them? Well, the key thing to remember is that neither Epson or Canon actually make their own papers. There are only a few specialist paper makers and coaters, because it's the coating that's the important thing. And I've got this set and I'm not going to uh, list them all here. I'll, I'll, I'll cut in a list into the video when I remember what it, what it is, but I've made quite a few. Um, as ever, these profiles, if they're useful to you, contact me. They're available in return for a coffee donation uh, for it. So if you've got a stock of Epson paper, however you come by it, and you want to use it with your new Canon Pro 310, the good news is it works absolutely fine. The even better news is I've made some profiles because Canon will never make profiles for their papers for somebody else's printer. Likewise, Epson will never make profiles. Um, the companies that sell papers don't make profiles for OEM Canon Epson papers. So I made these. Now, this is an I1 ISIS, what I use for making my profile. This is a scanning spectrophotometer. This is the big version of it, which will let me uh, make profiles from larger sheets of paper. It depends on what paper I've got available. This is, uh, for example, this is Epson Archival Matte. It's printed using the matte paper setting. Now, all the profiles I've made use the top load on this. They don't use the rear feed on it. It's just, yeah, I'd much prefer using the top one if the paper will go through And these papers all go through it. So this one, is made using the matte setting. I say it's Epson archival matte um, and it's fine. Uh, now, these are the larger ones up here. There's Epson standard proofing paper, premium semi-gloss, Epson velvet fine art. Still one of my favorite papers years ago. Excellent paper, works great on Canon printers, works great on Epson printers. So we got this. Uh, this incident is the software that I'm running. It's just mirrored on here. Um, the software I'm running on this is i1 Profiler. I've just made uh, a profile here. This is from this just over 2000 patches on these two sheets of A4. Um, I prefer to use A3 or A3 plus just in one go, but I can use sheet, smaller sheets as well. And I can see just by looking at the shape of this uh, that um, it's, a, it's on a matte paper, it's on an art paper. Now this particular one is Epson Fine Art Cotton Textured Natural. This is from their signature uh, worthy range. And I've got several of these trial packs of it. Now, these do have some slightly different names, but uh, in particular, uh, traditional photo paper is what it's sold as here. It's a Baraita style paper. Works okay on this. Um, it's, it's a paper I've, if I'm honest, I've never been truly enamored with. I've tested it over the years. It's a good paper, but there are papers I prefer. The Velvet Fine Art is in this, uh, so the VFA is a lovely paper, feeds perfectly well from the top slot of this. Uh, then there is Hot Press Natural, Cold Press Natural, Hot Press Bright, 
cold press bright. There are four papers there. So there's a textured, non-textured version of art papers. This is the textured version. Um, it also is known as a different, there's different names for it as well. This is the thing, the papers stay the same, but sometimes the names change on it. But anyway, that's a range of papers there that I've, I've done on this. If I look at the performance of it, um, I can with this, I can go back and look at the measurement data and I can see the data that's been measured from these patches. And if I click on one of the patches here, the black patch, I can see, yes, it's black. I can see it's pigment inks from the shape of the graph that's there. And if I look down, we can get what some people are impressed by. We can get the DMAX numbers. And we find as typical on Canon papers, Innova papers, other papers I've tried on this Permajet, photo speed. The art paper on this, this particular one is giving me a D-max of 1.71. Now, some people are more swayed by such numbers than others. Um, I think they're pretty meaningless. Um, they, they show you if something's wrong. If this came out at 1.2, two or something like that, I'd know there was something seriously wrong in the setup. But if this came out as 1.2, they would look wrong anyway. Um, now, I happen to know what it looks like because this particular paper is from a sample pack as well. Uh, it says fine art cotton textured natural. Uh, normally in sample packs, the name of the paper is written on the back and every other sheet in the pack, it was. But on this one, it wasn't. So I first printed this off using the fact that the name is written on the back and we get that. Now that instantly tells me, I'm hoping this is going to be visible in the video, that instantly is wrong. I can spot that. I've printed thousands of these targets. There's something seriously wrong. I did the damp finger test because the printable side feels slightly tacky when you do that. And lo and behold, I found out that this had been mislabeled. Um, so this paper has got the name on the printable side. So that's the wrong side. And that's the right side. Um, that's why I was just redoing this, because this one just looked completely wrong. The others look fine. That's fine. This would have a D-max of about 1.2, which is pretty abysmal. That one. As I've said there, 1.71. So when you get a pack of paper, do always check that um, you know, it's been put in the right way up. And if it's in a pack, put a, put a label on the box or something like that so that you can remember. Because some of these art papers are quite tricky to tell which side is which. Um, and they do only have one printable side. Now, the question I also often get asked is, OK, Canon and Epson don't make these papers. Who do? Um, I do know quite a bit of this information, but unfortunately it's stuff that I've been told by people at Canon, Epson and that, and um, I'm not entirely certain I can pass the information on. However, and this one is not giving away any secrets, the range of papers here, the fine art cotton, textured natural, smooth natural, smooth bright, textured bright. Were you to look at the Innova range of papers, you would see that they offer a range of similar papers with slightly different thicknesses, IFA, 20, IFA 11, 12. There are several of them. Of it. And I think you would find they are strikingly similar to some of these. Now, remember, Epson and Canon buy enough paper that they can get paper made to their specifications. So there may be subtle differences on it. Suffice to say that now that I've profiled these papers here, these Epson papers on this, the Pro 300. And I, I've, I've tested these when I had a Pro 1100 as well. When I've tested these on here, um, let's just say I know that the Innova papers, of which I've got quite a few rolls of the Innova papers, will print perfectly well on this. Um, now, similarly with this, the Epson P5000 pigment ink printer, that's 17 inch big one sitting here. Um, I know what's different in, prof yeah, in profiles, what papers match on that. I have a role in the moment of, in this of some Epson IFA 115, I think it is. 
Um, that's also strikingly similar to some other papers that, yeah. So just look at the specs. You won't get the direct information, but most stuff you want to know, you can find. But suffice to say, these all work very well. Um, if I look at some of the glossy papers, that's why, let's have a look. I have done some slightly glossy ones as well. This is Epson standard proofing paper. It's a um, semi-gloss paper. Now I've profiled this using the Pro Luster setting. Incidentally, I have not created AM1X files for this. They're, they're a bit of a pain to use. I, I personally find them and they don't give great benefits on this, the 310 or the 300. On the 1100 for my, and bigger printers, yes, it can be worthwhile making custom media settings, but the hassle of having to use the um, media configuration tool to load them up and that is more than a lot of people want. So this one, once again, this is profiled at the Pro Luster setting. And there we go, and there is a paper. You can see a bit of the sheen on it. Of that. That's a nice paper. But anyway, as I said, if, these, uh, if you have a 310 and you have some boxes of Epson paper, have a look at the list. If you want them, just drop me an email. I'll put links in the notes. Um, they're all available, the profiles. I will be doing all, when I've done the review of the uh, 310, I will be making a sort of a grand list of everything that I've tested. But this is just for the Epson papers. So there you have it. I hope that's of some interest and it sort of demystifies a bit about papers, their names and things like that. I've done a few other videos and stuff on that. Do have a look at the main written index I've created for the videos as well, if you're curious, because YouTube is utterly useless at curating uh, content. I've got well over 750 videos I've done. Um, I've produced a categorized index of them because as much as anything for my own benefit, um, because it sort of covers everything I've done and it's broken into different categories. But if it's useful, hope it helps. Thanks for watching and bye. Oh, and also the usual like and subscribe, etc., etc., that I always forget to mention. Thanks, bye.